The five reasons why lately Bitcoin has been skyrocketing and most of the altcoins have not. Hey and welcome to today's video. My name is Julian. On my channel, it's all about making you crypto fit. So we talk about stuff like blockchain, cryptocurrencies, decentralization, but obviously also a bit of entrepreneurship and mindset. Today, I want to discuss a question that I get a lot at the moment on Twitter. That is, Julian, why over the past weeks has Bitcoin been really going up? I mean, we have an all time, not an all time, but we have a, a long time high on the Bitcoin dominance. We're over 60% now, which is really a lot compared to over the past years. It has barely been at that level. So I think we have to go back over two years to be at that level. So, but why have the altcoins been stagnant? And obviously against Bitcoin, it has been dropping dramatically. If you had been uh, over the past two years, I think there's pretty much all the coins um, that we're, we're losing against Bitcoin. And that's dramatic if you think about it, right? Um, because the risk in Bitcoin is definitely the lowest. Most of the altcoins are lost. I mean, I'm talking about there's a few outliers who won against Bitcoin, but uh, most of the altcoins completely devastated all like over the last two years, Bitcoin low. So in incredible if you think about all this. Um, so why is this? And let's talk about the five reasons. The very first reason is the strongest existing use case with the strongest network. And that is obviously you have a, a market dominance. And over time, especially in digitization, also in cryptocurrencies, you will have a winner who maybe not takes it all, but who takes the largest pie. And you will have this. And it, because it's a network, it's not the same as any kind of regular service. It has network effects. And it's difficult for another player to outbid these network effects. Most of the exchanges, most of the services, most of the companies are betting on Bitcoin. So it's difficult to kind of outpace that if you're already in this existing infrastructure. So obviously, because it is the number one and most people want to get with the number one and they want to have the lowest risk, this automatically puts this trend into Bitcoin. And we have seen, especially over the past couple of months, that we kind of, it looks as if the low or the, the, this winter is kind of over. And so now that more and more players come in and say, hey, um, I want to invest, then if I'm a player and I want to invest, my first question is what has the lowest risk and what has in regards to that the highest return. And obviously for many people, Bitcoin has that. Um, and so that's where it already goes. That's where the money goes. Um, the second reason is kind of tied to that. And that is in order to get into the crypto system. So let's say there's a, people are betting on a crypto uh, summer right now happening. You want to get into crypto, you need to go through Bitcoin. There's no other way or very few other ways to have a good fiat crypto pair other than Bitcoins. Everyone has to go through Bitcoin. So the first influx of money always goes into Bitcoin. It pushes up Bitcoin. Then afterwards, the money looks, do I want to get into the alts or am I going to cash out against into fiat? But it's always in a second wave, right? So that's the second one. Now, the third one is obviously, if you look into the press and which cryptocurrency is being discussed in the press the most, Bitcoin. And I mean, by far, that's a landslide. I think 99% of the times you hear about Bitcoin, maybe 90%, and then you have probably 9% of Ethereum, and then 1% are all the others. And so obviously most people, if you talk to people who don't know much about crypto, they have heard of Bitcoin. So if they buy something on an exchange, and what are the largest exchanges where you can buy uh, crypto, uh, where you can buy crypto, I link up my blog post where I discuss this in great detail, how to buy Bitcoin in a safe way, but you will see, it's mostly Coinbase, it's Kraken, it's Bitstamp, it's a few other exchanges, um, but these are it. These are the exchanges, and most of the people buy Bitcoin there. So obviously, it has a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, the press talking about it, so that's just how it goes. Now, the fourth one might surprise you, but the reason for the fourth one to work is that any kind of attention helps if the underlying product is good. And what I mean with this is, in the U.S. at the moment, they're discussing. I mean, this is one of the. I'm not sure which. There's a congressman, I think discussing to outlaw Bitcoin. Now what happens is a uh, Bitcoin gets a lot of attention by a lot, a lot of people, not only in the US, but all around the world, because suddenly there's a discussion that one congressman, I mean, the odds of this happening to me are 0.0001, but because one person talks about it, it gets brought up in the press, in the media, on, on Reddit, on Twitter. So people hear about it and they're like, oh, what is this exciting thing called Bitcoin? I need to get into this. If someone tries to outlaw it, man, I need to buy it. And there's this regular attraction to things that you shouldn't be doing. Now, and the same thing happened during the prohibition when alcohol was outlined. 
people wanted to have it more than anything else. And generally, if something, it tends to be outlawed, it goes up a bit in price because it becomes a bit more rare, a bit more difficult. And so it is really, really interesting to kind of see this effect there. Now, I don't think it's gonna get outlawed, but obviously it has a very positive effect on the Bitcoin price, just this kind of speculation and this fear setting, even though it's completely uh, ir irrelevant. And I think the fifth one, and that was especially now with Tether, with Bitfinex, with the Binance hack, I think more and more people are amazed how resilient and how decentralized this entire system has become. Um, while the newbies and, the, and people who don't really understand it, they're like, oh my gosh, there's so many things happening, so, so dangerous. I think the large players, the people who have been in the system, people with, with, with real money and uh, people who know how this works, um, they all sit there and they're like, wow, this is powerful. I mean, this stuff can't take it down. This can't take it down. This can't take it down. Um, this is really, really interesting. And so I think the foundation there is very, very solid. And that's why I think especially Bitcoin gets a lot of the, the hype cycle right now. Um, what would be interesting to hear from your side is, what do you think? Do you think we're gonna see an ongoing Bitcoin dominance or do you think at some point we're gonna shift over to the altcoins and we're gonna have a bit of a second wave in altcoins? It's gonna be very interesting to see. Uh, in one of the next videos, I'll actually give you a bit of my opinion, but you can let me know your opinion here. That would be very interesting. So with this, I hope you like this stuff and I hope these five reasons make sense. One thing that's really good at the moment, I think, is that people stopped focusing on the ETF because this was a lot of hype cycle stuff. So right now it's really a lot about fundamentals, foundation, I think it's quite good. And uh, yeah, it's very, very positive, especially since we broke the 6,400. I mean, everything is at the moment a bit on a green light. Um, don't get greedy, very, very important. Read my article that I linked up below. And uh, yeah, hope you're getting value at this. Subscribe to the channel. I'll put out a few more videos, especially around this topic. So subscribe so you don't miss anything. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below if you like this stuff. I read the comments, I answer them. And uh, yeah, with this, hope I see you in the next video. Yours truly, Julian.